I already made a warlock and a titan guide, so now I'm here with a full in-depth guide for hunters. Bungie recently gave hunters some huge exotic buffs which skyrocketed how much damage hunters, but especially solar hunters, can do now. The main exotic we're going to be looking at today is Shards of Galinar, but I will quickly go over Celestial Nighthawk and Assassin's Cow since Celestial Nighthawk got a 25% damage buff and Assassin's Cow is pretty damn good for survivability. First, we're going to go over the solar class. Pick Blade Barrage since we're running Shards of Galinar, then pick Gambler's Dodge to get our melee back when dodging near enemies, whatever jump you like the most, Knife Trick since it's the best option out there, and Healing Grenade to start our constant supply of restoration. For aspects, we're picking Knock'em Down, which will add more projectiles to our Blade Barrage Super, and whenever we are Radiant and get Knife Kills, we'll get them back instantly. This gives us an infinite Knife gameplay loop as long as we don't miss or not kill anything. Even if we do end up wasting our Knife, we can just dodge to get them back. For the next aspect, we're picking On Your Mark. Getting Precision Final Blows will grant you increased weapon handling and reload speed for all weapons, up to 3 stacks, up to 12 seconds. This aspect also gives you 3 Fragment Slots instead of 2. Gunpowder Gamble is an insanely good aspect, especially with the bug where if you instantly throw your Gunpowder Gamble as soon as you get it, you can skip the cooldown for the next one and keep chaining them back to back to back fast as hell. But this grenade also has an insane blast radius and does way too much damage to yourself to be worth using in a solo flawless run. It's worth running if you know what you're doing and you know the blast radius, but I personally wouldn't risk it and on your mark's benefits are too good to pass up for this big of a risk. Now for fragments. We're going to choose Ember of Empyrean to extend Radiant and Restoration off of Solar Weapon or Ability Kills, Ember of Singeing which grants us class ability when we scorch targets, Ember of Torches which will give us Radiant when hitting an enemy with our powered melee, Ember of Solace to have longer base Radiant and Restoration buffs. This one isn't needed as much and can be swapped out if you'd like. And Ember of Ashes to apply more Scorch to targets. The exotic we're going to be running is Shards of Galnor. Shards of Galnor gives us a ton of super energy back depending on how many hits and final blows we get with our super, up to 50%. On top of that, any throwing knife kills we use will give us 2.5 to 5% super energy depending on the rank of the enemy. This means we are getting our super back to back like crazy which will allow us to dish out a ton of damage and give us the option to safely panic super if need be. Now to quickly talk about Celestial Nighthawk and Assassin's Cow. These are both great options to run but both have some pretty hefty drawbacks. Celestial Nighthawk, while allows you to do over a million damage in one shot, while paired with Connect Surges and a Weakened debuff, gives you no survivability benefits. This exotic is strictly used for damage rotations and nothing else. While it is a phenomenal exotic for DPS, you need to know exactly how to survive on your own with no extra benefits from any exotics. And you need to hit a headshot every time. This means no whiffing in a stressful environment where you really aren't allowed to make mistakes or it could punish you pretty heavily. Celestial Nighthawk will allow you to hit way higher damage numbers but will require riskier gameplay and more accuracy. Assassin's Cow is basically the opposite of Celestial Nighthawk. Assassin's Cow makes you invisible and gives you health on powered melee kills. Finishers do the same thing but give a bigger chunk of HP. This exotic is great for survivability but gives no damage benefits and makes it so you have to solely rely on your own ability of being able to have a good DPS rotation. Now a great way to get the most out of both of these exotics would be to loadout swap, but loadout swapping might be a little too advanced for a video like this and I personally like to keep these videos to swapping at most one exotic in the middle of a run and that's it not a whole loadout. If you do want a loadout swap, then I'd recommend building all your mods for Assassin's Cow around survival and ability regen without using any armor charge mods that make your armor charges decay over time the blue mods. Then when you're ready for damage, swap to your Celestial Nighthawk loadout, which will have two kinetic surges for Celestial Nighthawk's damage, since three don't work. Then swap to another Assassin's Cow loadout, which has your normal DPS surges and other mods. In total, that's three loadouts. If you want more info and help on loadout swapping, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out, but the main focus of the video is no loadout swapping. The guns we're going to be running are Scatter Signal, any solar weapon of your choice, and Dragon's Breath. On Scatter Signal, you want Enhanced Overflow and Normal Controlled Burst. Controlled Burst Enhanced Perk does nothing at the moment. This fusion is pretty good for DPS rotations, and you can get the red bars pretty easily from Riven. Enhanced Overflow will allow you to stack your magazine up to 16 shots, and Controlled Burst allows you to do more damage and have a faster charge rate after getting a kill or landing a full burst. You could also run a Riptide with Auto Loading Chill Clip or Vorpal, but I prefer Scatter Signal. My preferred solar weapon is Zawuli's Bane, since it's basically Sunshot but a little worse and is legendary. This gun is from King's Fall, so good luck getting the red bar unless you love the LFG or have friends who actually play the game. I'm also going to recommend running Callus Mini Tool or Bug Out Bag with at least Incandescent for the final encounter, just because of how many adds there are, and hunters with this loadout have almost no wide AoE add clear capability without Gunpowder Gamble, unlike base Solar Sunspot Titans or Sunbracer Warlocks. Therefore, you can't miss any of your shots if you plan on using a hand cannon. Finally, throw in Dragon Breath because I know you have it, and if you have the Catalyst, that's great, but if not, it's not a big deal. All the Catalyst does is create Fire Sprites on kills and allows the fuel to regenerate faster, which will allow allow the gun to auto load faster. Yes, it's increased your DPS, but at the end of the day, it's not that big of a difference. So if you don't have the catalyst, don't fret. Onto the artifact. Around level 43, you should unlock your final artifact node, which will allow you to select up to 12 perks that you want. The perks I'm going to highly recommend will make this run go significantly faster. The best perks in order are Solo Operative, Revitalizing Blast, Argent Ordinance, and From Once You Came. Solo Operative is a straight 15% buff whenever you're in activity as a solo player. Revitalizing Blast gives you a 15% debuff to bosses or champions for 6 seconds whenever you cause damage with the solar ability. Argent Ordinance is a 15% damage buff for rocket launchers, which will consume an armor charge when you fire a rocket. This has a cooldown of 4 seconds. 
And finally, from once you came, increases ability damage by 5% against scorn and taken enemies. If you're using a strand weapon for damage, which if you're using scatter signal you are, you should also use unraveling orbs, which will grant strand weapons unraveling rounds whenever you pick up an orb and will end up netting you some more damage. We're almost done with all the pre-setup information, so let me run you through my armor mods real quick, and then we'll move on to some in-game phase examples on how to complete this dungeon solo. Alright, so starting off with our stats, we're going to want to make sure that we have 100 resilience. Then we're going to build into Discipline, because the only way we're getting Restoration is off of our Grenade. There's no other way we're getting it. And then build as much into Recovery as possible. Um, and, then and then Mobility is last, if you have some extra room. Um, starting off with our Helmet Mods. I'm running Heavy Ammo Finders, just because I don't need something like Dynamo. But if you're having trouble getting your Super Cooldown um, fast enough, which I find that very hard to believe with Shards of Galinar's new buff, then you can run some Dynamo Mods. Um... Then we're going to run Harmonic Siphon, because Har Harmonic Siphon's cooldown in between making orbs is almost zero. It, there might be a cooldown, I'm honestly not even sure, but I think there is none. And we need a lot of orbs to make armor charges uh, to get our surges. So in combination with Solar Siphon, or Harmonic Siphon I mean, we're going to also be using Heavy Handed, which will make orbs of power. Um, and this is based off of your powered melee final blows. So This has a cooldown though. So we're not just, just, we can't just use this because the cooldown is too high. It's like five seconds, I think. Maybe three. Uh, so in combination with that and Harmonic Siphon, we'll be making a ton of orbs. Um, enough for us to have our armor charges up almost all the time. Uh, and then we're going to be running Impact Induction, which will give us our grenade off of powered melee attacks. Uh, notice that it's not kills, it's just hits. So you can just damage an enemy and get some charge off of that. Don't worry about running any sort of dexterity mods because On Your Mark gives us a fuck ton of handling. Uh, and reload speed, so both best of both worlds. On to the chest plate. Um, I'm running concussive dampener just because there's a lot of AOE attacks. Uh, but you could run sniper damage resistance for the crossbow guys, but especially make sure you're running void resistance because those crossbow guys do a lot of damage. I'm also running harmonic resistance just because the big tall knight guys that drop the totems uh, do solar damage. And I'm pretty sure all the other scorn do as well. So. That's what I'm running there. On legs, I'm running two surges and one scavenger mod, just because I don't want to swap my legs in and out a ton. Um, I'm not running three surges just because there's diminishing returns and it hits in pretty hard for the third surge. Uh, but on my chest, I am running a separate chest plate just for swapping to get some extra heavy ammo when rallying and when I max out on heavy in encounter and I'm pretty safe. Onto the cloak, I'm running two time dilation mods and if I had an extra slot, I would probably run Bomber, just so that I have a little more room to get my grenade back. You could also run Special Finisher if you have a lot of armor charge. Uh, if you notice you have a lot of uptime on armor charges, armor charges, and you don't have enough special ammo. I never ran out of ammo, or I ran out of ammo, but it wasn't enough to the point to where I really, really needed to focus on some Special Finisher mod or, uh, you know... Anything crazy like that, so uh, pretty straightforward. You're just going to be building straight into damage, making sure you're not dying to the snipers and using void resistance, um, and making sure that we are generating enough orbs for armor charges. And real quick, the guns. Uh, one big tip, boss spec is a 7.7% damage buff, 7.7% uh, damage buff, and then taking spec is a 10% damage buff. So if you want some extra damage on the second and third boss, you can run Taken Spec. Uh, I run Taken Spec on my Callus Mini Tool for the third encounter because I find using a hand cannon for the third encounter um, only on Hunter. I find it pretty rough just because if you miss a shot or two, you uh, might get just gang banged by all the Scions because they like to uh, replicate themselves pretty fast. So I'm running Callus Mini Tool. I got Incandescent and Unrelenting. You could also run Bug Out Bag, a uh, pretty good solid option as well for people who don't have that. And Scatter Signal, you can run Boss back, Taking Spec, and then Dragon's Breath uh, is an exotic, so you can't do that. But yeah, that's about it. Nothing crazy. Alright, so here we are at the first boss. This boss is uh, very easy to kill. So what we're going to do is I'm going to rally with my Reserve chest plate, make sure I have my extra rockets, just because uh, more heavy ammo the better. I'm going to start and then sit behind this rock so I don't take damage, swap back to my other chest plate. And then I, I like to sit over in this top left area, because I know Adds will spawn here every time. Uh, and there's also a bunge of cover, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw my grenade down. This will start my restoration, so that when I start getting a solar ability kill, or I start getting solar weapon kills, uh, my restoration will go up. And what I'm trying to do right now is keep my restoration timer up, 
and I'm making orbs by getting solar siphon kills, by getting rapid solar weapon kills back to back, uh, and I'm making orbs with my melee. So I'm trying not to pick up any of those because I don't need uh, my armor charges right now, I don't need the extra damage, and I want to keep those for damage phase. That, you don't need to optimize that heavily, that's just what I've, that's just what I tend to do, I try to keep the armor, uh, the orbs out of the way because I don't need them right now. So. The boss does tend to do a lot of really close range damage, so just be careful about standing too close to him. Sometimes it's unavoidable if you want to get the totems. If you really want to play it safe, you could just skip a whole phase, but he shouldn't do that much damage where he'll actually kill you unless other adds are shooting you. What you can do is you can also sit behind the taken totems to actually block some damage, uh, so I've been killing damage. So right here, imminent wishes at 3 seconds, I'm running over here waiting by these orbs. Remember, you don't have to actually do this part. This is just what I like to do to get the most out of my damage. I start off with a Dragon's Breath Rocket, and then because the Blade Barrage projectiles count towards the uh, Weaken debuff, the um, Revitalizing Blast, I'm not throwing my melee right off the bat. So the first the first couple knives give the Weaken debuff, and then um, I don't have to worry about wasting my melee. Another thing to know is uh, to note is that when you use Blade Barrage, you carry your momentum. I don't play Hunter a ton, so I kind of forgot about this, almost killed myself right here. Just be careful that you're not holding W, going straight into the boss and blowing yourself up. Uh, I got lucky here and didn't end up dying. Um, so once I throw my Blade Barrage, your Dragon's Breath should be almost ready to uh, reload. So you can shoot off a Fusion Shot and then swap to Dragon's Breath, you'll, you'll uh, hear the auto reload. And then you're going to just keep firing your Fusion Rifle. Once you see the white numbers come back up, not the yellow ones, the yellow ones mean there was a, weekend, or a debuff on them. Once you see the white numbers come back up, throw your melee, and then dodge. This will give you full stacks of on your mark, and then you're going to have faster handling and faster reload speed. So I'm dodging here, and I'm going to swap between my weapons. More handling, more reload means more DPS. So There's one full phase. This was a pretty bad phase, but um, I ended up three-phasing this guy anyways. I ended up almost blowing myself up twice, and or almost dying twice, almost blowing myself up. You can get this done pretty easily. Not that bad. Uh, I ended up choking. Actually, I could show you the second phase. It's probably probably better that I show you an actually good phase. So right here, I'm standing here. I'm getting all my armor charges ready. It's starting. I'm ready for it. Dragon's Breath, Blade Barrage. I don't need to apply Weaken. And I'm a fusion, fusion, fusion. I get off about three to four fusion shots every time before I swap to my Dragon's Breath. And then when I fire my Dragon's Breath the second time, I throw my knives immediately after. So boom. There's an actual decent good damage phase. Um, obviously it could have been better, but yeah, there's one damage phase right there. So we're gonna skip on to the second boss now. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of need to survive here because there's way too many ads, and I, I know this sounds stupid, right? Of course you want to survive, but you really need to emphasize surviving here in the next boss because there are so many ads, and the eyes like to do so much damage that if you leave too many of them alive, that you'll just end up getting one shot. So. What I like to do is I like to start off by this top left pillar. This is just habit, you don't have to do this. I just like to start up here and kill off the Minotaurs immediately, just because I don't want the Minotaurs um, getting too close to me and shooting me with their um, high burst damage. So I'm going to start off by getting some knife kills. Um, he usually takes ignition damage from some of the acolytes or whatever. I'll kill these Minotaurs, and then I will start shooting the eyes immediately. You can also take care of the Scorn Crossbow guys if you want. Uh, I end up leaving them for now just because they're not that big of a deal to me. I'm not getting ready for damage phase or anything soon, so uh, I guess leave them alive. Alright, so Scorn Rise Invoke the Fortunes on, and your Demise. That means the Scorn Knights are spawning in on the left and right side. We're going to make sure that we get at least two. If you get one, it's not a big deal, but you're just going to have to wait a, um, another phase unless you get three. So what I like to do is you can try to line up one of those adds with the boss, hit like the first two knives and then hope that the third one goes through them, or if you know how to time it right, you can hit one of the, just a single knife on the boss and get the weekend. It's not that big of a deal, but um, you can get the weekend off like that, or you can just use your knife throw and then dodge to get it back. So right here, around Biting Cold 7, you should start to leave and go for the torches. I know I'm about to get this off though, so I wait the extra second. Because at times 9, you you start slowing down. I don't know if you actually get the stasis slowed stacks, but your character will physically slow down. I, I can't tell because Bungie's UI is horrible and only shows for whatever at a time. So, um, I got a little lucky there. Not gonna lie. 
And then for the for the rest of the time, the eight seven seconds that I have, I'm just gonna go around and make sure that I'm proccing my radiant, uh, my restoration, my radiant, whatever. Um, right here, I ran out of restoration. I'm pretty sure, but I couldn't tell once again because it's not popping up. So we're gonna make sure we have restoration while getting the solar charges because we don't want to die to all the ads that are spawning in. About the time that you place down the first charge, the eyes should spawn in. So make sure you're taking care of some of the eyes first, at least the middle eyes, so that you can grab your next solar charge. Here I'm going to try to get one of the eyes alive just so I don't have to worry about taking a ton of burst damage. And no Minotaurs will spawn in until you finish a full damage phase. So here we go again. I'm going to kill the knights again. I'm just going to skip this because it's boring. And then right here, so this is, a little, this is important, right when um, the Biting Cold ends, I'm going to dunk one of these charges. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait a little bit before I dunk the next charge because I can wait as long as I want. And I want to make sure I'm getting my restoration up and all my armor charges. Right now, I have zero armor charges. Um, I'm pretty sure armor charges prioritize on the buff and debuff list. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to go and get a knife kill, get some solar kills real quick. Try to proc orbs. So I'm generating some orbs. And I'm going to kill this, uh, the Scorn crossbow guys because they do so much damage. It's not worth uh, dealing about. Apparently, I left that guy alive. I don't know what I'm doing. So right here, I have my max armor charges. And I could have got it up to 18 seconds by picking up that orb right there. I just jumped over it. I don't know if that was intended or not. But what's going to happen is my restoration is getting kind of low. So I press, I scroll wheel, or I press one of my keybinds to swap weapons. And I'm going to shoot some of the eyes just so I don't have to worry about killing the adds that are next to me that I want to keep alive for getting easier knife kills. And the eyes will despawn in damage phase. So I'm going to dunk this. And then I'm going to Dragon's Breath, Melee blade barrage you don't need to do the melee that was an accident there it's just a habit from the, my titan run um but like i right here i should have used my melee and then dodged because i would have had a longer uh debuff period but it's fine dragon's breath uh dragon's breath blade barrage fusion melee dragon's breath so here we go i'm getting low here what i should be doing is taking cover behind the pillar but i'm not so i throw my uh restoration down and i'm gonna get prioritize staying alive for now so you have some, you have a good, uh, a decent amount of downtime in between. Start my dragons with off fusion. Get my blade barrage off again. As there's a habit with my melee again, and I'm just gonna keep going with my fusion until I hear the ching from my blade barrage, or I mean dragon's breath. Boom, get that off. And then right here, I I hear this guy shooting me, and I he's I know that he's uh, doing a decent amount of damage to me, so I know there's a scorn crossbow guy alive. I'm gonna go over here and kill him because I don't want him living, and I'm gonna dodge near him so that I get my knives back. I'm going to kill him in a second, I think just after this. Also, I missed that rocket. It's just bad, bad aim by me. Try to aim toward like the middle of him, just because when he stuns, the Dragon's Breath tends to do a lot of stagger. So make sure you, when you're aiming, um, try to hit him like dead center, like bottom middle, because he likes to uh, jolt his upper body up a lot. So just going to keep this damage phase going. I shouldn't have reloaded there. That's just a waste of time. And I, I messed his damage phase up decently, like... It could have been way better, but um, even then, you'll, I'll show you that I end up doing pretty well. That's fucked. Like, that's that's just tough. He decided to dodge as I threw my knives. That's just unfortunate. So, I end up getting no no melee charge, no dodge. I saw my on my mark, though, so it's nice. That was a lucky hit. Uh, Dragon's Breath, Blade Barrage, Fusion, 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 Fusion. Getting shot by the dude who decided to juke me. Actually crazy, I'm getting my ankle snapped by ads, but whatever. And I end my damage phase there. So, I messed up my damage phase pretty bad, but look, I got it to the end in Wailing. Like, that was still pretty good. You'll, you'll for sure phase, you'll, you will three phase this guy. I know you'll, you'll three phase him. Worst comes to worst, you four phase him. It's not a big deal. Um, and you can two phase this guy. You definitely can. So, there's that guy. And then we will move on to the third boss. Uh, I'm using Strand and Eager Edge in between the encounters just because I don't want to risk dying. And, okay. So, for the final boss, I prefer using Chaos Mini Tool, just because with uh, Zaolu's Bane, there's so many Scions spawning in, and they like to replicate so fast, and there's so many other things that's happening, that um, I'd rather use something fully automatic where I don't have to rely as much on my aim. And if you miss too many shots of Zaolu's Bane, you got the long-ass reload animation, um, you might end up dying. And it actually happened to me a couple times. Uh, I died a couple times just because Zaolu's Bane just wasn't fit for this. You can use it if you're better than me. I mean, you can. Anybody can probably use it, but um, 
I just like having an SMG here. This is what I use. You can also use bug out bag, which I mentioned earlier. Um, incandescent is really what you're looking for. So just use what you prefer. I prefer an SMG here. That's all I'm swapping around. Nothing else. Um, and then when damage phase starts, I'm sitting behind the left side pillar. Just because that's what I like best. Um, and I think that's about it. We'll just let this play out. So I'm practicing my restoration here. Getting Im immediately getting solar kills. Gonna kill all these scions. I'm just throwing my knives every once in a while to make sure I'm getting some orbs. You don't have to do that. That's just what I like to do. You'll get plenty of orbs from Solar Siphon. So immediately, I'm killing these witches. If you get lucky with the scion spawns, you can kill the scions and they'll ignite um, and blow up with the incandescent and they'll actually kill the witches for you. So that doesn't happen as much, but you can do have it happen. Kill the witches immediately. They need to die. They, they mess this run up every time. I know the witches in the other runs are important to kill, but for hunters especially, you need to make sure you kill them. So I'm shooting the Taken Orb because I don't want to sit in that. So this is what I was talking about earlier in the second phase, uh, the second boss, where you hit some of the knives on that ad, you hit it on the boss, and you get uh, the best of both worlds. That's just... I guess know how to do it, so I do it. So for the first night, I'm making sure I always kill the first night because I don't want someone to boot me around, or, or I don't want to take close proximity damage. So I'm going to kill this guy immediately, and I'm going to try to get three Taken Nodes um, for the longer bo uh, boss phase. But if you get two, that's fine. Just you, you just need to survive. I always use the dragon's breath to kill the second guy just because I'm going to have enough heavy that I don't need to worry about it. Also, when your dragon's breath is charged up, the flames on the ground will end up killing ads for you. So it, it works out pretty nicely. So while I'm waiting, I know that all the ads are dying for my dragon's breath, so I'm just going to go and shoot all these taken blades. Um, Hex of Enveral Corruption, the thing that will end up killing you if you don't transfer your debuff. I usually, I try to hit it around like one or zero seconds because I know I'm, you get a grace period. There's a little grace period and if you try to hit it around like three seconds, sometimes he'll come up and smack you when it's zero, he'll die and then you won't be able to get rid of it and you just end up dying. So, so here's damage phase, it's about to start. Um, I'm pretty sure I had no restoration there, so I throw my restoration down and because Dragon's Breath is solar and the fuel's all the way charged up, when I shoot it at the boss, I'm going to try to position myself right in between all the adds so that the solar from Dragon's Breath is killing the adds and increase my restoration time for me, which means I don't have to worry about procking my restoration um, in the middle of a boss phase. So Dragon's Breath, Blade Barrage, Fusion, 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 Dragon's Breath, Melee, just keep it going. This is actually, I think this is like one of my best phases right here, just just based on of uh, rotation itself. So I got a little low there, that's just because um, I thought there were no adds up, but there were some. Obviously play safer. And then starting up here, I got here a little early, so the witches haven't spawned in yet, which is nice. Running around, killing the witches immediately, making sure they're dead. See, like right here, these witches do so much damage, and you only have restoration times one, and you have no way to get any other restoration. So you need to make sure that um, you kill these witches. They need to die. Okay, I'm going to shoot the eyes here. I'm going to skip a little bit because it's boring. Night spawns in on this floor especially there's almost no cover for this night so if you want to take the other night instead you can this is just the night i always take this is what i do so what you could do is you could take the night on the other side instantly kill him dragons with this guy which actually is probably a way better move there's way more cover over there so i'd probably i'd probably recommend doing that also if you see any weird screen uh screen tear or like colored uh coloring that's just because this media player um is a little finicky when it comes to pausing and uh playing over and over again so only reason I use it is because the Windows movie and TV doesn't support MD5. So. And Windows wants me to buy it for a dollar or two. Like, well, I'm not doing that. Stupid. So right here I'm killing the rest of the Scions because I want to keep my buffs up. And I got that off, which is lucky. The Scions are spawning in a little early. This is nice. So I'm going to Dragon's Breath, try to get that over the ads. I don't know if I hit them there. Yeah, I didn't. So I didn't hit them there. My restoration's about to go out. I'm looking at the, um, looking for that. Throw my, throw my nade back down. And because I know I didn't kill any of them, they're gonna start spawning rapidly because they're just gonna duplicate. So I'm looking behind me, killing some of them. And I think I just give up the rest of my damage phase here. No, okay, I shoot off one more rocket. Okay. So the smart thing to do would have just to give up the damage phase, make sure you don't die. But um, I ended up killing them with incandescent, I think. So right here, I have so much heavy. Two extra heavy bricks in my four. I end up swapping chest plates. And I pick up the rest of this heavy, I max out. Um, I don't need to swap chest plates for special because I'm only running solar reserve. You can if you want, that'd be like really min-maxing, but 
um, I find that I don't need to do that, so. On this floor, the witch has spawned before me, so I'm playing a safe throw, my healing it extra early. Getting close. I didn't expect her to be right around that corner, so. Uh, she spawned a heavy brick for me there, I think, which is nice. Killing all the scions, going to kill, um, kill off this final witch, and then I will start killing the knights again. I'm just gonna skip around. I doubt you want to see all this. So immediately, I'm killing this left, the left knight. There's more cover over here, and the best thing to do is when he's starting the animation, he can't move. So I jump up and I try to stick him with that. Uh, usually, I try to jump up just because I don't want an ad jumping in front of me, and I actually hit him with dragon breath. So it's unlucky. He threw one out a little far, so. Um, I'm trying to make sure I stay in here as long as I can, because it's about 6-7 to seven seconds to get those off. If you stand on the totems, I'm almost positive they can't hit you, the scorn guy. Uh, but the, he might be able to, so I still jump anyways. I'm getting low here, I'm just tanking it, just because I know I'm going to survive. Restoration, Dragon Breath again, right in front of the ads. As will die to it, boom, Restoration is at 12 seconds. And I'm starting my damage rotation again. Unfortunately, so I, I don't know what was wrong here, but my Dragon's Breath didn't reload for me. Like, is Dragon's Breath... I see... Oh! I see it now. I didn't see this when I watched it earlier, but Dragon's Breath, when it's stuck on the side, it start, It wasn't igniting him. So, um, that's just unlucky. So I guess just try to stick him, like, right in the middle. But I don't know. I feel like it, it should have done it anyways, because I've never... I think that's the first time that happens for me, out of all my all my runs with Dragon's Breath on Hunter and Titan. So what I'm doing is, before I jump up here, I'm looking around for orbs, because I want to try to get my armor charges maxed out. Um, I end up uh, losing one, but it's not a big deal. And then I lose another one from Dragon's Breath. So what I'm doing is, I'm rocketing, and then melee. Sorry for the stutters, it's my movie player, it's not you. Um, rocket, melee... And then just fusion fusion. I get low here, so I play safe. Just sit behind here. I'm not gonna risk it. I'm shooting the I'm shooting the eyes just because I don't want them to kill me. And I'm trying to keep my restoration up. So you can usually tank enough from like one or two. I don't remember why I'm shaking my head there, but I think I'm shaking my head because I was being stupid. So and like one of the guys in my I think my warlock video, he was telling me I was playing too aggressive, and I I do play aggressive. That's just how I play the game. So uh, I'm trying to stop that. Just so showing. Uh, making an example is easier. So right here, what I would have done is what what I could have done better was move left a little more, just because if I got unlucky, um, some of the blade barrage projectiles could have hit the statue, and they either could have done damage to me and potentially killed me, or I could have just missed damage. So here we go again. I'm just playing it safe. I don't want to die. Like I've guaranteed a two phase if I keep the same shit up. Another tip, Murph. Um, I'm pretty sure Murph or somebody else in one of my comments told me that you can just drop off of the platform whenever you want and grab ammo. It won't teleport you anywhere, no joining allies, the boss doesn't lose, you don't lose phases or anything, so you can just walk around and grab ammo. I sat here for, I did a test run, and I sat here for like three minutes, just walking around, doing nothing, and the boss, he would shoot me, but he wasn't doing anything that would like, make me lose a phase. So that was pretty nice. So I'm just walking around grabbing ammo. Uh, nothing interesting, really. And then I'm gonna start final phase. I mean, you do lose out your buffs. That's the only downside, but... Right here, so... This is when I realize what my actual phase should be for the top floors. I should throw my grenade down, or if I don't have restoration, I should have it. I should throw my melee at the eyes to keep my knife going, so then I can constantly, um... Get my melee back, uh, get my melee back, and my, uh, my dodge. Sorry, my dodge back. This boss does this so much, I don't know if this is a bug or if this is a part of the encounter, but he'll just teleport randomly only on the third plate. And so, I, I got, <laughs> I thought I missed on my plate barrage there and I was pissed, but uh, I guess I didn't. But look, look at that damage, that's really good. That's better than Warlock and Titan. Hunters have, like, the, like potentially the best damage, or maybe the best damage out of anything right now. Even, like, even without being super optimized. So you, you can totally, totally two-phase this, even if you're playing super safe. Um... I'm gonna skip straight to the final stand, just because the rest of the the rest of the time, all I'm doing is playing it a little safer because I have almost no ammo, and I'd recommend you do the same. So, here we go. We're going into final stand. Let me skip just a little bit. Okay, so here's final stand. 
I had a Dragon's Breath ticked on him beforehand, so I think it's still going off here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm gonna sit to the right side because the left side has that Taken Blight. If you sit too close to it, you'll just take damage and you can probably die. Uh, potentially die. So what I'm going to do here is I have I have some rockets. I'm reloading it. I didn't need to reload it because I missed Dragon's Breath. So I stick it, throw my Restoration down. I'm just taking my time. I don't have Blade Barrage. I don't have a lot of ammo. This was a mistake. I shouldn't have gone to Final Stand without getting some more Heavy because I want Heavy to carry me to victory. I don't want to have to Fusion Rifle and sit out in the open for too long. So I'm just getting that off. And w I know there's not enough eyes alive to one-tap me. Um, so what I do is I roll up to the eyes and I roll so that I get my melee back. And then what I'm doing right now is I'm just killing the eyes over and over again. I'm not worrying about boss damage as much unless there's no eyes. What I'm doing is I'm trying to get melee kills so then I get Shards of Galanor, uh 2.5 to 5%, whatever the super regeneration is for melee kills. So I'm just going to prioritize getting my melee kills. I have my dodge here. So, I can be a little more aggressive with my knives. Yep, so I'm just getting my- I'm just making sure I get these knife kills over and over again. I thought I missed my knife there, I wasn't looking at my, my buff, so I was just, just playing it safe. Rolling there. All I'm doing is I'm just getting knife kills over and over again, and blade barrage, and I think that's it. Yep, done. Killed him instantly. So, this is probably the hardest character to run it on, but you can also probably do this the fastest just because of how much damage hunters can do. The only encounter I died the like I actually would die consistently in is the final boss. So I, I the one thing that helped me get out of that loop was running Chaos Mini Tool. I really think running a hand cannon um, put me at a disadvantage here. So yeah, not too bad. Definitely the hardest out of all the classes, but at the same time, damage wise, it's also the easiest. Hopefully this video helped you get the solo files completion, and if it did, let me know in the comments. If you think this build is horrible and that I'm one of the worst players of all time, also let me know down below. I really do want the feedback, and it doesn't just help me, it could end up helping other people who read the comments too. If I see something in the comments that I like or that I think is a good idea, I'll make sure to add it to the pinned tips comment at the top of the comment section. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you around.